what I judged Saturday night and how conflicted I am about this fight. Okay. So Saturday night, I uh, sat back in the judging seat for World Class Flight League. Okay. Had an event uh, in Largo. Uh, great night. Great night of fights. They had some kids action, uh, some MMA, some kickboxing. It was a, an array of uh, activity. Yep. So it was brought to my attention one fight before. You know, I'm going to make up a number. I don't remember. So around the eighth fight, somebody mentions to me, be prepared for what's about to come up. Okay. A transgender fought. Okay? Okay. I've been very outspoken, okay? All right. That I believe, and I'm conflicted now. I'm going to, again, my mind was blown Saturday night. Okay. So, transgender athlete, a female, former male, female, transgender, gets into the cage wearing the... I wouldn't even call it a sports, a women's sports bra. It, it was like a, you know, a full shirt. Like a rash guard. Like a rash guard. Okay. Um, I don't know any other way than to say it this way. Big chest, big breasts, and we're about ready to have a female fight. Okay. Okay. I see athlete number one get in. Wait, wait, wait. wait. So what is, what is athlete? The, the transgender, does it look female? Does is, Has there been hormonal replacement? Has there been surgery and alterations? Or, I mean, visually, I don't know what it looks like. So describe that. Well, it, it was a very big, structured female. Okay? Okay. Um, like I said, large breasts, sort of rash guardish. Natural kind of breasts? Or, or I don't know. I didn't touch them. I know that, but like, do they look like they were... Enhanced, or were they surgically done, or is it natural? I, well, it couldn't be natural because it's a former guy. Well, but if you do enough estrogen, they'll, they'll turn in. Okay, so I don't know. I didn't okay. go up and ask medical advice. Okay. I did want to speak to both fighters, but because I'm judging amateur fights, I don't talk to amateur fighters. Okay. I, I don't think that that's it. It would put off a, a, a bad perspective. And I believe, and I've always said this, that I could judge my mom, fight my wife. You know, I could watch, you know, you fight, or judge, you fight Steve. Steve wins 30-27. We, we already know that. So transgender athlete, male, now a female, gets in the cage. I was told, and I don't know if this is true, but the last time this athlete fought, they had to go back in the locker room and put on certain protective items. Mm. Okay? Okay. All right, so now the female, former male, now female athlete, is in the cage. I'm waiting for the opponent. She comes out with no shirt on. What? No shirt. The, the true female, the actual female. And then I look. So wait, 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 hold on. No breasts. I'm like, this is the weirdest thing I've ever. What is going on? As it turns out, and this is where I'm conflicted. Okay. I've always said that you should fight in what you were born in. Okay. You know, we've talked about if a male becomes a female, transitions, and I don't know how far transitioned, you know, uh, this, this person was, that it's unfair to have that athlete fight a female because it's not a female, even though it's become a female. Right. So I look over. I'm thinking all along I thought it was a female fight. It wasn't. So transgender athlete, male to female, fought a male. Okay. Which I didn't so expect. It's a little bit more fair. I mean, same weight class, I assume. Well, yeah. So, so the weight right. equal. So, uh, so it's two. <laughs> it's two men fighting. Well, but it's not. See, and, and well, again, uh, I'm trying to be as political. So genetically, they were genetically, male, male, but if they've right. done the hormonal replacements and they've changed the, the DNA internally and their hormones internally, and there's more estrogen than testosterone, then they would be more. It would be a more of an advantage for the true male. Oh, well, of course. Sure. Yeah, no, no, I, I get that. But I've been very vocal on the transgender athlete should fight in, in what they were born in. Now as I'm watching this fight and judging it as honestly and fair, and, and, and it wasn't a close fight, so we didn't have to worry about any of that stuff, which would have never come up anyway. Who won the fight? The male. The, 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 yeah, the guy. The guy who's still the guy. The, guy, the athlete who didn't wear a shirt. Okay. Okay. 
But here's where I'm conflicted, and I'm being a thousand percent honest, okay? So I've said all along that if a male transitions to a female, that that athlete should fight against the male, should run track against the male, on and on and on and on okay. and on, okay? And it doesn't matter what I believe, but what is being told to us in the world is that athlete is now a female, okay? Okay. Well, I'm dead against a male punching a female. That's where I'm conflicted. So I don't know what I'm thinking right now. And I didn't know. And again, I can judge and not think. I can think and judge. You know what I'm saying? Right. So it doesn't matter to me. My job was to judge that fight fairly. Sure. Um, no matter what. But I was so conflicted from at first... I thought it was a female fighting a transgender female. Then when I saw that it's a transgender fighting a male, I'm, I'm thinking, oh, okay, this is, you know. And then you, as you're looking at the structure of, of this athlete with breasts and, you know, the female appearance and whatever, it's a male punching a female. And it's kind of like I've said to you, I'm against male wrestlers competing against female wrestlers. Even though it's scripted and it's all set and all that, it's still a bad look. You know, some six-year-old, some ten-year-old sees, you know, whoever athlete, I won't say names just because my attorneys are standing by sure. too, just so you know. Uh, you know, said male wrestler, you know, throws that make-believe punch and connects to China. And I said some, this to, in the, the post office. Let's be honest. China could kick all three of our asses. You know, and she's dead. And she could still kick our asses. So, so I guess my question is, um, I mean, Sean Strickland has been vocal about this. There's two genders, male, female. Right. And he, he talks about how the world is the way it is now because of this acceptance of something. Where years ago, if you were transgender, you had mental illness. You were treated for being something that's right. wrong with you. Right. But now, with acceptance and, and just the, the world we live in. Well, and a lot of people still think that way. Should they Like Sean Strickland. Correct. Of course. I mean, but should you... Should there be a transgender division I think in so, yes. combat sport? Well, I would. I think after watching that fight Saturday and being conflicted, you know, by the whole thing, the problem with that is you don't have enough athletes to do that I yet. Mean, I, well, now, maybe they're not okay with coming out yet, but they're mm -hmm. there. They're, there's there's people. There's communities that we don't have any access to or don't know anything about. Don't have communication to. But would you do male to female division and then do female to male division? Well, yeah, you would have to. Because you wouldn't want to start, like, female transition to male and then male, because there's still an advantage yeah. on one side, so you would have to divide it even of further. Course. Of course. But are you okay with the acceptance? Like, anyone well, can compete uh, and no matter what their preferences are? The problem with this world that we live in is people don't think that way. I don't care. It doesn't affect me. You know, what you do doesn't affect me. The problem with the world, and we've talked about it, and, you know, we've talked about, you know, I had a friend of mine, a media person in, in Vegas. You know, we were friendly. It's not like we were, you know, Steve and I, you know, good friends. We were cordial. Well, if you did this, unfriend me. I'm like, I'm not unfriending you. I'm not unfollowing you. But you're welcome to do that to me. I don't care. I think more people need to think that way. Just because you think it's wrong doesn't make it wrong. And just because you think it's right, doesn't make it right. You know, if you're not breaking the law, I don't care what you do. So yeah, uh, that would be the fairest thing for all. But are there enough athletes on both sides to be able to do that? Uh, I, I, I guess I give Ralph Garcia, you know, a lot of kudos. For sure. You know? It's, it's, it's innovative, it's forward. Um, the level of acceptance, right? And so, yeah, kudos to, to Ralph. And to be honest, kudos to both athletes Absolutely. That, that took this fight. Kudos to the transgender athlete that fought in the male division, you know, because that's what I've thought all along. And like I said, it's just a strange pizza pie. Well, I just think, speaking of pizza pie, the uh, Pizza Expo going on in Las Vegas right now. Shout out to all my brothers out there competing. Are they, are they still your brothers when you're not in pizza? I'm, st I'm always in pizza. Are I, you really? My contribution to the industry is over. the pizza diet 
will be for generations. Like to give people tools to improve their business, to to inspire their people. That's that, that didn't stop when I stopped. My, my phone's restaurant. blowing up, by the way. I bet. <laughs> But wait, let me go back to the transgender thing for a second. So, yeah. all right, so I'm okay with it because it's equal weight classes. I mean, how many times have we talked about, okay, Amanda Nunez versus Henry Cejudo? Like, who are you taking? Amanda Nunez. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, I mean, look, Holly Holm, like some of these most dominant MMA female fighters in the same weight class could take on the male <laughs> champions of the world, right? True, so, but I'm still against that. Right. But... You know, but when it comes to like the average world or just general pop, you know, my master, Fabio Navais, always said, you never get to pick your size of your opponent in the real street. In you're the not, real world. You're not allowed to use that word this, in this world. What's that? You're, you're a sensei. Oh, okay. Master? Yeah, you can't use that. What do you call him now? I don't know. Well, you have to be, it's a respect, it's an honor. I, that word's off limits, isn't it? You can't say, you can't say master yeah. in that way of respect? Yes. Really? Yeah. There's no more master suite. What? Can't say that anymore. Yeah. Well, how they're taking away? Like, what about the lock company? No, no more master locks. I guess not. It's just lock city. No way. Will they change it? I don't know. I don't. I mean, know. they're changing NFL logos. They're changing. They're changing culture. They're taking away. You know, correctness. Maybe, maybe they're changing the master lock. All right. Back to whatever you were saying. What I'm just saying. He told me all the time. He's like, look. He would always put me with these big, huge guys, and I would just get manhandled like a like a bear. And and I would always be like, "Why don't you give me some of my own weight class?" He goes, "I am." And I was like, "I was like, Fabio, I'm like 175 pounds." He's like, "There's no way you weigh the same as me." And I'm like, "Yeah, dude, it's it, that's I just want to weigh." So he was putting me with 250, 275, 300 pound monsters. And but then he would always say, "Look, you don't get to pick the size of your opponent in the sure. street. Sure. So you have to be prepared that you may have to fight the number one pound for pound athlete on the planet to survive or save your life or protect your family." So get over the weight class and just prepare for the real world. And so I think, you know, a, a level playing field where everybody has the same skill set, the advantage still goes to the born genetic male in all those situations, unfortunately. No, I, I, I'm going to disagree. Because you just said Amanda Nunes, Holly Holm. You run across either one of those two, uh, the, the main event, Saturday. You, you know what the main event is, don't right. you? Well, no. It's Rose. Versus uh, Hebus, both of them would kick your ass and my ass and Steve's ass. So like, there's levels to that, though. I mean, like there's there's weight classes, there's levels to. I mean, I'm talking like equal across the board. You know, like weight 125, 125. Yeah, but you just but, said that you have to be prepared no matter who. You know, true. All right, before let's don't get out of schedule. Okay. We'll continue talking this. All right, let's hit the bottom of the hour break. Coming to you live from the studio. This is Knockout Radio, brought to you by Staff Song, Eight Man Strong, Bucked Up Energy Drink. And by Alex Summer. I'm Sean Sosmer at ESPN, talking sports with Randy Harris. This is the Tan Talk Radio Network. Eight Man Strong is not.